Hey guys. So today I wanted to come on and I want to talk a little bit about sublimation. Now, for those of you that are experienced at sublimation, you know, um, this video may not be for you, but you may even learn something that you didn't know about sublimation. So you may want to say, <laughs> all right, so <clears throat> I'm going to teach you all things sublimation in this video tutorial, okay? And when I'm talking about sublimation, guys, um, sublimation is one of those um, methods that you can use to design on different items that have been coded for sublimation or, or that are 100% um, polyester or either a polyester cotton blend with polyester being the higher count. So that's what we're going to talk about today, sublimation, because I get a lot of questions anytime I do uh, sublimation. I get a lot of questions about how did you do this or how did you do that and so on and so forth. Okay, so I want to try to answer those questions in this one video. Now, I did a tutorial once before. I've done plenty of tutorials on sublimation, but I'm going to try to make sure I cover everything um, like I said, in this video tutorial. So it's going to be a little bit long, but it's going to be worth it, especially if you want to get into sublimation or you don't know what sublimation is, but you've heard about it and it may be something that you're interested in, then um, <clears throat> this video should answer those questions for you, okay? So I'm going to break it down, layman's terms, make it easy. I'm going to show you my printer that I use inside and out, um, the ink that I use, ink that I've used in the past, when I talk about the cartridges, let's just get into it. But before we do that, Marn says, what's up? <laughs> All right, guys, this is one of my DTF transfers that I bought at the shop here in Dallas, Texas, and I absolutely love their transfers. They wash great. Um, they do feel a little like plastic on the shirt, but like I said, they, I get so many compliments about this shirt. Got the whole crew on here. I get so many compliments on this shirt. And all I had to do was just press it onto my t-shirt. All right. But that's another story. All right. So all things sublimation. Let's get started. So um, first and foremost, you when you um, are looking to do sublimation, you have to have a sublimation printer. Now, does that mean that you have to buy a printer that's already ready for sublimation? No. It means that you have to have a, pr a printer that can take sublimation ink, okay? So you have some printers that come already ready for sublimation, and then you have Epson. <laughs> And a lot of the Epson printers can be changed over to sublimation. Now, I don't like to use the word converted because it makes it sound like a very long and difficult process. Like you're going to have to, you know, get manual labor to really convert this Epson printer over to sublimation, which is not the case. It is so easy, guys. Or let me say it can be easy. OK, if you don't put that ink, that inkjet ink in that printer, do not. OK, um, so. I have the Epson Workforce 7720. I'm going to be showing you my printer here in just a moment. But I want to get out some of this other stuff before I head over to the printer. But I have the Epson Workforce 7720. Now, my printer, the 7720 and the 7710, has been both, both have been discontinued. But they do have newer brands out there of Epson that work like these, okay? Um, I purchased the Epson Workforce 7720 right before they were discontinued. And I purchased mine because it has the two trays on it. Um, and it will allow me to print up to 13 by 19 in size. So that's why I selected the Epson Workforce 7720. Um, I also bought mine off of eBay. Um, so I got a really good deal on it. And it didn't cost me an arm and a leg. Now, there are some places that you can still find the Epson Workforce 7720 and 7710, but when I tell you they're going to hit you over your head for that printer, <laughs> you might think you bought a DTF printer. <laughs> okay, so 
Um, they are very expensive if you, if you do find one. Okay. Now, that being said, I have the Epson Workforce 7720, which has two trays, allows me to print from two different trays. Um, and then I can print up to a 13 by 19 with the Epson Workforce 7720. Okay. So now we got my printer out of the way. Now, when I bought my printer off of eBay, I bought it brand new. So it wasn't refurbished or anything like that. It was brand new. And it came with the regular inkjet ink that you would put into the machine. I highly recommend that you do not do that, okay? I don't care what kind of Epson printer you have. Do not, if it is brand new, do not put that inkjet ink into that printer if you are going to want to do sublimation, okay? Because you have to bleed all of that inkjet ink out of that machine before you can use it for sublimation. I haven't had to do that because like I said, I purchased mine brand new. I went immediately with the sublimation ink. Um, and at that time I used a sub. Um, so I used the a sub ink into my Epson Workforce 7720. Um, so I can't tell you the process on how to bleed the ink out. I just heard some people say, if you don't do it right, it will ruin your entire printer. I will also tell you that if you take and buy an Epson um, printer and change it over to sublimation, your warranty is null and void, okay? So I don't have a warranty and you won't have a warranty if you change an Epson printer from inkjet to sublimation, your warranty is gone, okay? So that being said, that's another reason I would highly recommend not to put that inkjet ink into that printer because if you ruin it, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a done deal. So um, the other question I get asked a lot is, well, can I use it for a little while and use up the ink for the inkjet and then go over to sublimation? Sure you can, but again, you're going to have to make sure you bleed all of that ink out of that machine before you change it over to sublimation. Now, if you want to take the risk, go ahead, but don't say, I didn't warn you if you mess up and I can't help you. So I, I, I won't be able to tell you what to do, but buy a new printer. Um, now, a lot of people get scared when you say change the printer over from inkjet to sublimation. It's just a matter of getting cartridges, putting ink um, into those cartridges, and then putting those cartridges into your machine. And they're gonna look like they're gonna look like the 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 cartridges that came with your printer. The only difference is you put the ink, you filled them up, okay? Um, and it's not inkjet ink; it's sublimation ink. Sublimation is going to bleed into the material. So like you, I'm rubbing on my shirt. If, if I had sublimation on here, you wouldn't be able to even tell it if I was doing this. Whereas with DTF, you hear that, okay? Sublimation, it just, it sounds like I'm just rubbing on my arm, okay? But this, you can feel the, the rubber or the plastic or whatever, plastic on this DTF. Same thing with fabric transfers. You can feel it on your shirt or on your garments, okay? All right, so I'm going to show you. <clears throat> this is what the cartridges. Now, this the cartridges that I'm showing you are for the Epson Workforce 7720. You can go to Amazon or you can Google your printer that you have and what size cartridges will fit your printer for sublimation. These... Um, they're going to come, and they look like just regular cartridges, guys, okay? What they're going to look like, okay? And it's, it says inkjet cartridges, but these are not inkjet cartridges. These cartridges are ready for sublimation, okay? Um, inkjet cartridges already come with the ink in them. You don't have to put ink in inkjet cartridges, <laughs> so uh, don't let that fool you, okay? But these are inkjet cartridges, but you know, their, their cartridge is ready for sublimation. Okay, now, um, <clears throat> I already have ink in my printer. So I'm showing you what my cartridges look like. Don't be afraid. Like I said, they look like the regular inkjet cartridges. The only difference is you have to fill these up. So you can see on this side, hopefully you guys can see that there's nothing in these. They're empty, okay? Um, so when you're getting ready to get your printer, your Epson printer, if you decide to go with an Epson, when you get ready to get your printer, you want to make sure that whoever you get your ink from, 
will supply you with your cartridges because some companies will sell you the ink and the needles and syringes, but it won't have the cartridges or vice versa. Now, I went, like I said, I initially went with, um, I think I said A-sub, but I did not initially go with A-sub. I take that back. I initially went with um, Ink X-Pro. Ink X-Pro. And guys, I've had my sublimation printer for years now. And this is the first ink that I bought. Okay, it cost me about 80 bucks and it came with all four colors. Um, your magenta, your cyan, your, what is it? Uh, let me not get the colors wrong because I always say it wrong. So it came with the cyan, the magenta, the yellow, and the black. It came with all of them. And guys, you can see I'm not near out of any ink here, okay? But over the years, I over that time, I'm going to say over the years, over the years, I have um, taken out my cartridges and used other inks, okay? So other inks that I've used, like I said, is A-Sub, and I've also used Hippo. Um, if this is Hippo, the Hippo brand, and this company reached out to me to try their ink, and I really like it, um, but this is Hippo. And you can see I got plenty of ink still in here. Um, but this one did not come with everything. My Ink Expo came with everything. It came with the ink. It came with the cartridges, the needles, and the syringes. This did not, okay? So sometimes when you, or when you get ready, if you're going to do sublimation, make sure whoever you get your ink from, they're going to supply you all of your needs to do sublimation, okay? It's not just a matter of getting the ink. You're gonna have to have the cartridges. And in addition to the cartridges, this is my uh, A-Sub. So I'm just showing you different brands of ink. This is A-Sub and I love A-Sub. Love them, love them, love them, love them. But this is what I have in my printer now. I have A-Sub ink in my printer now and I have enough ink to last me for for a while, okay? So you get all four colors in here. Now, the good thing about A-Sub, I'm gonna show you that they have a bundle, okay? They have a bundle that you can get that comes with everything except for the cartridges. You would still have to order your cartridges, but it's gonna come with the ink, paper, um, the needles, and the syringes, okay? So I'm gonna show you that. So now we got different brands of ink. You got your this is what I started with, Ink X Pro, and I love their ink. I did not have any problems with them, and I'm I'm sure I'm going to eventually use all this up. Okay, so I've used Ink X Pro, I've used Hippo, and I I'm currently using A Sub. And out of the three, I've used A Sub the longest. Now I'm not going to be going back and forth with switching from Ink X Pro to Hippo to I'm not because I'm pretty sure you can run your printer that way as well. Um, but I would not take, when I get ready to switch inks, I switch cartridges. So the cartridges that I have right now are from my A-Sub ink. If I were to switch over, then I would use a different cartridge with Hippo ink. I don't or you don't want to mix inks, okay? Now, what you would do, I keep saying needles and syringes, right? So it is just what I said, needles and syringes. <clears throat> All right. So when you get your ink, guys, it's so easy to change over to sublimation, okay? You're going to want to get your needle and your syringes, and then you're basically just going to take your ink and I'm not going to do this because I don't want to put the sink in my, um, in my, shirt. but you're basically just going to open this up, take that top off, you're going to stick this down, and you're going to pull that ink out, okay, and you're going to fill your syringe with the applicable color, so right here we got yellow, you want to go with yellow, okay, you want to keep your ink, your cartridges matched up with their colors, blue, then you want, or cyan, you want to get your cyan and magenta, you want to get the magenta and black, 
They're all labeled for you. Now, when you're handling these cartridges, guys, you do not want to touch this metal in the back that connects to your printer. You do not want to touch that. So that's why when you see me handling it, I'm either going to put, pick it up from the side like this, you know, or like this, but you do not want to touch that metal, the metal on the back, because that's how you're going to line it up in your printers. So let me try to get you a close up here. Do not touch that, okay? You also do not want to pull that plastic off of the bottom here. You don't pull that off. When you put this in your printer, it's going to pop and it'll automatically start to, you know, get the ink into your, your um, printer. So do not pull that plastic off of your cartridge, okay? So these are your cartridges. And what you're going to do is you're going to have a little hole in the top of your cartridge. I'm going to keep the yellow, hold up the yellow one because you guys can see that I started the yellow before when I did a tutorial. But what you're going to do is you're going to have a hole on the back side. You're going to take the little stopper off <laughs> and then you're going to take that ink and put it into that hole and then you're going to push that ink down into the cartridge and you'll be able to see it starting to feel. Okay, so this one has ink in it, all right? And once you get, and you have two holes on some of your cartridges, guys, your ink goes in that back hole, not that front hole, in the back hole. Now, these cartridges I like because they automatically came with the stopper, so you can't confuse which hole is supposed to go in. But the ink is supposed to go in the hole closest to that back side or the uh, front side of your cartridge, because this is the back. And this is the front. So the ink is going to go closest to the front side um, of your um, cartridge, okay? And then once you put that ink in, don't shake it up or anything like that because you want as less air bubbles as possible. You're just going to put the little stopper top back on to close it back up. <clears throat> now, I don't want to get this ink on my hand, so my little stopper is like trying to load me up with ink, and I ain't having it. But it's very easy. You just put that top back on, okay? So do not put this into your printer without that top being on there. You do not want this ink to spill out into your machine, okay, or spill out when you're handling it, okay? So that's it, guys. Once you get that ink... Once you use your um, syringe and needle to pull that ink out of the bottle, you're going to shoot it right into your cartridge. That is the changing. That's the changing. Because once you get all of these filled up, then you're going to place them into your cartridge, into your printer. And I'm going to show you mine and my printer here in just a moment. So these are the cartridges. Guys, you want to make sure whoever you choose to get your ink from that you're going to get cartridges, empty cartridges, needles, and syringes, okay? That is a must. All right, so that is that on the cartridges and needles. And then, guys, once you put that ink in, I always take and run some um, warm water through my uh, syringes to shoot out any excess, okay? Now, you can put... You can shoot as much as you can back into your bottles, but whatever you get down in this little area here that you can't get out, you just want to wash these and dry them immediately because you don't want these to rust on you, okay? So dry them off immediately, you know, but clean your needles after you um, fill them up. Clean, clean your needles. All right, so that's your needles, that's your syringes, that's your ink. And now we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about paper. Okay, you have to have sublimation paper. So when I'm doing sublimation, I'm not using regular um, I'm not using regular copy paper. I'm using sublimation paper. Now the only sublimation paper I can speak for, guys, is ASUB because that's the only sublimation paper. Um, I take that back. I have used some from Aviva Warehouse or Join Us or both. Um, I'll show them, show you the paper. So remember I said that if you 
if you go with a sub if you're able to use if a sub has the ink for your particular epson printer if you go with epson then they do have bundles so this is the sublimation bundle from a sub for eight and a half by 11 125 gram um, paper and in this bundle they give you a mouse pad that is ready to receive sublimation. So this mouse pad is not like a mouse pad that you would just go in the store and purchase. This mouse pad has been coded to receive sublimation, okay? So it's gonna come with the mouse pad and then it's gonna come with all of your ink, okay? All of your ink, each color. And then it's going to come with your needles and it has some gloves here, okay? Um, but it does not come with cartridges and it does not come with syr um, syringes, okay? Syringes and cartridges, you would have to get separately because they're not in your bundle, okay? And it's going to also, guys, if you think that is not a reason to go with this bundle, it also has your paper. So there's your sublimation paper. So this is the A sub bundle that has everything that you need except for syringes and cartridges to get started doing sublimation, okay? So this is over half the battle right here, guys, going with the bundle kit. Now, if other companies have bundles out there, guys, I can only speak to the ones that I've used. So you can search Amazon and Google. This is a sub, okay? Now, anything I'm mentioning to you here, guys, Hifu Inc., X Pro, um, a sub, their paper, it's all going to be linked in this video, okay? So all you have to do is click on, click on the link to actually locate it and find it. The only thing I'm not going to link is my printer because it's been discontinued and I'm not going to recommend you buy it from nobody. <laughs> <laughs> okay from nobody because it's going to be overly priced so you'll have to locate a printer you know or buy an epson printer an upgraded model that is available for you now a sub also has just paper so you can get You can get just the paper. This is 11 by 17. You can see it's a sub as well, 125 grams. Um, this was a little bit more expensive. Um, it comes with 100, it came with 110 sheets. But remember, my printer will print up to 13 by 19. Okay, so this is 11 by 17. This is not the largest sublimation paper. I do have 13 by 19. This is the eight and a half by 11. So you can get just the paper. Okay, so you don't, if you buy a bundle, you don't always have to go back and get a bundle. You can order things individually with a sub and these other companies as well. Now, like I say, I don't know if Hipu or Ink X Pro sell bundles. I haven't researched it because I haven't had a need to, but I'm giving you the names. You can check those out um, if they're compatible with your printer. Now. I know that um, ASUB and Ink X Pro and Hipu, they do provide cartridges and ink for a lot of different Epson printers. Just make sure that yours is in there. No, I haven't found an HP printer that can be changed over to sublimation. Some people may debate about that. I'm not because I haven't tried it, okay? Um, or Canon or anything like that. I, I can't speak on that, okay? And I don't want to mislead you. All right, so that is your sublimation paper. So right now we've talked about the ink. We've talked about the cartridges, the syringes. Um, we've also talked about um, the printer that I have and um, ones that can be changed over. Um, 
Remember I said that sublimation, it bleeds into the material, okay? So here's an example. Let's see what I got over here. Thought I had picked up one of my things. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some things that I have done with sublimation when I first started and I didn't know any better. All right, so in order to do sublimation, you're gonna have to have your sublimation paper. This is a tumbler. This is not a tumbler that I would just walk into Walmart or Target or anywhere you can purchase tumblers and just buy a tumbler and just sublimate on it. Your tumbler has to be um, able to receive sublimation ink and it's going to receive the sublimation ink by you taking an image, printing it out on your sublimation paper and then taking that sublimation paper and, and wrapping it around your tumbler. Okay, you wrap it around your tumbler, tape it, tape it down, and then you've got um, tumbler heat presses out there, and I use a convection oven, and I'll talk about that. Um, but I use a convection oven, oven when I'm doing tumblers and mugs and coffee cups and stuff like that. I use my um, sublimation, my convection oven. Now, I want to show you my boo-boos when I first started. Okay, they have what you call ghosting, and that means that you don't have the um, paper flesh up against the tumbler to receive the sublimation. So it's going to call what they it's going to create what they call ghosting. Okay, so when you look at this, it has some light spots on it. Okay, it has some light spots on her afro. That's ghosting because there was air pockets in between the paper and my tumbler, and that causes this ghosting effect. You can't fix it, okay? So once you get ghosting on your item, you can't fix it, okay? So this was one of my first ones. So this is how it's supposed to look, okay, like that. And then this is with ghosting. See how you got that little light shadows in there, all right? So um, you can order what you call sublimation blanks. This was a sublimation blank. It has been coated to receive sublimation ink, okay? I can wash this and everything. I can, you know, do whatever, and this is not going to come off. Now, this is metal, so you can scratch it with, you know, of course, and scrape it or whatever. So, um, but yeah, this is your sublimation tumbler. Um, I've also done <clears throat> this is also uh, been coated to receive sublimation, okay? So this is not a coaster that you purchase. Anything I'm showing you is not something that you just walk into a store and purchase. Now, like your craft stores, they are getting better with sublimation items. So you can go into Michael's and Joann's and Hobby Lobby, and you can pick up items that are coded to receive sublimation. <clears throat> but they're called sublimation blanks. And they're normally going to be in an area together. Um, but you can see how I did sublimation on here, okay? So again, I printed my image on sublimation paper. I took that paper, put it down onto this, which was white at the time. And then I put some tape, some heat tape to hold it in place. And then I used my heat press and pressed it, okay, on there. Now, sublimation requires very high temperatures. So anytime I do sublimation, normally if it's my heat press, it's probably at about 375 to 400 degrees for about 60, 60 seconds, okay? Um, but sublimation requires very high temperatures um, for pressing, heat pressing. So that is something else that you can do sublimation on. <coughs> Excuse me. You guys can see, I mean, it bleeds into the material. There's nothing sitting on top of this that is ink that bled into my coaster. All right. This is another mug that was coated to receive sublimation. So I sublimated on this as well and put it in my convection oven. Okay, now I mentioned my convection oven. 
Um, guys, if you are going to not purchase a tumbler heat press or mug press, you can use a convection oven. I do not recommend that you use that convection oven to put food in, okay? Because it's releasing gases from the ink. So I don't want to mix that with something I'm going to be later putting food in that machine, in that uh, convection oven and then eating. So that convection oven is strictly for sublimation. You want to get you a sublimation, not a sublimation convection oven, but a convection oven that uh, you're going to designate for sublimation only. Okay. So that, that receives sublimation. Now, I fell in love with these when I saw them online, but would I buy them again? No, because you can't really see the ink as well. You know, I guess if you were just doing black letters or something like that, it would show up better. Um, and it's still pretty, but I just, I prefer white. Guys, to be honest with you, if I'm doing sublimation, I prefer white so that I get the best uh, vibrant colors displayed on that sublimation blank, like, like this, okay? So you can see those colors really good compared to, you know, this. All right. This is also sublimated. This is a bookmark that was coded for sublimation. Okay, so again, I print my image out onto sublimation paper. I take that image, it's going to be mirrored. I take that image, put it on my sublimation blank, and then I'm going to heat press it onto that. So you guys, you can't even tell that anything's on there. You only know that something sublimated is because you can see it, okay? But you cannot feel it. It just feels like the regular bookmark. And I haven't did a good job with staying on top of mailing things. So I'm going to be sending this to my auntie. I'll make a point to get it out this week. I promise. Um, all right. Um, you have coffee mugs. Okay. This is a glitter coffee mug blank. And again, I print it on my sublimation paper and then uh, pressed it onto this tumbler. So I get this uh, coffee mug. Again, what I'm showing you guys are items that are coded to receive sublimation. These are not coffee mugs or tumblers or coasters that I would just go into a store and just pick up and purchase. Okay. You can sublimate on those items all day long. It's not going to show. <laughs> it's not going to show up. You're wasting your time. So you want to make sure you're looking for sublimation blanks. Read the fine print, especially on Amazon, because some people want your money and they'll tell you it's a sublimation item, but it's not, okay? So you want to really read that fine print to make sure that it really is a sublimation blank, okay? Um, <clears throat> this is a wine bottle holder that is um, sublimatable, okay? So I can sublimate on the front and back and then give this to somebody, wine bottle holder. So I'm just showing you different things, guys. Like I said, this is for someone that is wanting to get into sublimation um, or that is getting ready to start sublimation already. I'm trying to answer some of these millions of questions that I get, guys, about sublimation. This is a 100% polyester t-shirt, and I can sublimate on this. Now, with sublimation, you do want to stick with, when it comes to your garments, you do want to stick with white or light colors. Black, you cannot sublimate on unless you're using something on top of the black. So I could put down Glitter HTV, um, and Caesar has different products out there that you can use, guys. Um, they have all different types of HTV that you can sublimate on top of, but just to sublimate directly onto this black garment, it's a no. It's just going to show black, okay? So you're not going to be able to see it. So sublimation is for light or white fabric, okay? So this is in the light family. Um, this is 100% polyester, but you can get away with a cotton poly blend, but polyester being the higher count, okay? These are pillowcases, okay? And they are polyester, so I can sublimate on these. So 
for some people that ask, this is a makeup bag that is um, ready for sublimation. It's 100% polyester, so I can sublimate directly on here. Now, the reason that you're sublimating on polyester, guys, is because it's going to give you your most vibrant colors. If you sublimate on top of cotton, it's going to be dull and it's going to wash out, okay? It's going to wash out. Okay, so that's why you're not sublimating on 100% cotton. Like I said, you can do a poly cotton blend with polyester being a, the higher count. It still will be a little bit on the, the kind of matte dull side, um, but it will hold up, okay? But it's not going to be as vibrant as your poly cotton, um, I mean, as your 100% polyester. All right, so I think I got different types of garments and items that you can sublimate on. Um, I tried to kind of put a bunch of stuff around me so that I can talk about everything. Um, this is just a normal coffee mug, guys. Um, and I know that because I bought it. But I can't just say, you know what, I'm going to do sublimation on this and see what happens. What's going to happen, it's going to still be white. That ink is not going to... It's not going to hold up, so don't don't get confused and don't waste your money, okay? All right, so here, more coasters. Now you see how vibrant those colors are? Okay, so you can... You can do a lot with sublimation. Don't think just because you can't sublimate on dark... Um, colors that sublimation is not for you. It is going to be a low, a lower price point than your DTF printers, much lower than your DTF printers. Okay, so I'm not going to get into talking about DTF. Um, I can tell you that I'm probably one day is not going to buy a DTF printer, not because of the price, but it's just a lot around DTF that I'm just really not interested in. All right, so um, I think. Let me make sure. Um, heat tape. I want to talk about that. That's going to be something else that you want to make sure you have in your um, collection of supplies when you're working with sublimation is heat tape. Not just regular tape, but heat tape so that this won't melt. You want heat tape so that it won't melt under those high you know, uh, degrees that I talked about when you're doing sublimation. Oh, I have two more things to show you. I looked back and then I thought about it. So this is something else to give you more visual. I did sublimation on here. Okay, so this is coded to receive sublimation. This is the back side. This is the side that I put the paper face down on, and then it shows on this side, okay? So, I love this. I love it. I love it. I um I purchased this at Aviva Warehouse, guys, so I'm not sure if it's on Amazon, but you can certainly try. Now, when you sublimate on glass like this, when you sublimate on glass like this, you're going to be sublimating for minutes, okay? Um, instead of just a 60 second, you're going to sublimate for, I think it's about three or four minutes. One of the things I do like about uh, Aviva Warehouse and join us here in Dallas, Texas, is that normally they will supply you with the list to tell you how long uh, and time and temps for your uh, sublimation. So for your, let's see, glass, the cutting board that I just showed you is two to three minutes at 400 degrees, two to three minutes. And you don't mirror. So when I'm getting ready to do something I haven't done in a long time, any type of blank I haven't used in a long time, I always refresh my memory by looking at my list here. And I do have a list from Join Us 
over here somewhere as well. But those are one that's, that's good information to always have on hand. And you can also do sublimation on glass frames. So this is like a glass frame that has been coated with sublimation. So I can sublimate directly on here as well. Okay. Now Aviva Warehouse and join us. I will have them linked in the description of this video tutorial. I know they do offer ship shipping if you're not in Dallas, Texas, um, because a lot of these items that I'm showing you, you can get from them. Okay. Um, as well. All right, so I think I have covered everything about um, ink, cartridges, um, your needles, paper, covered the bundles, um, items that you can sublimate on, why you want to sublimate directly onto either 100% polyester or poly cotton blend. Um, and that these items are sublimation blanks. They're not just regular cups and tumblers that I purchased at a Walmart or anything like that. So now we're going to get into my printer. All right. So let's move over to my printer. All right, guys. So this is my um, Epson Workforce 7720. And so remember, I told you that this printer has been discontinued. Um, it has the um, two paper trays. So you have the one here on the bottom and then the top. And then this just slides out to receive your um, paper. Um, it is touch screen. And remember I told you I do have the 13 by 19 paper. <clears throat> so this is the big 13 by 19 <laughs> Ace of sublimation paper. Okay, comes with 100 sheets. This thing is heavy. Oh, God. Um, but now I'm going to show you inside of the um, printer. So give me one moment. All right, guys. So when um, I'm getting ready to change out my ink, <clears throat> I'm going to actually go to my touch screen. I'm going to go all the way over to maintenance let's see actually it's settings and then maintenance and then i'm going to select ink cartridge replacement and then it's going to say replace the ink cartridges and then i will hit start and then it will walk you through on the screen what to do Okay, you want to lift up your machine just like that, and then it's going to position your cartridges where you can lift up to take them out, fill them up, and then replace them back in. So I'm going to show you how they're sitting inside my printer. All right, so this is inside my printer, and I'm working with one hand here. So I would just take and lift up the back. And those are the cartridges, remember, that I showed you earlier. And you would just take and um, pull the back like that to pop them out. Okay, so this is my black. And remember, you don't touch that metal side. But that metal side is what's going to be lined up with the metal inside. You see the metal back? the metal piece back there i'm going to line my black up with that metal piece so that way you know how to just drop your cartridges after you fill them all up you just drop them line them up according to your yellow magenta cyan and black you just line them up after you fill them all up you see i got all my little tops on then you place this back down and when you put your cartridges in, you want to make sure that they snap, all snap down. Because remember, you got that little plastic that I told you you're not going to pop. It will pop once you push it down into your printer. Okay. And then once you get them all done, you just close your printer. 
and then your screen will then go through you know its thing to recognize the ink has been changed and it will tell you replacement is complete and anytime you change the ink or add ink, you always want to go in and do a print head nozzle check. And then it's going to tell you to load your paper. Now, I don't have any paper in here, so give me one second. All right. So when you get ready to do a print head nozzle check, don't use your sublimation paper. You want to use just regular copy paper. Okay, and I normally just put the eight and a half by 11 in there. And then you're gonna close that up <clears throat> like that. And then uh, make sure I got it closed. Close it up and then you're gonna start. It tells you to load the paper and then it's gonna go through the motions on that print head nozzle check. And it's pretty quick guys. It doesn't take a lot of time, but you always wanna make sure you do that. So I'm going to pause you for a second until it's done. Okay, it's almost done here. Okay, now it's printing out, getting ready to print out. Okay, and then it's going to print your colors and everything and you're going to look at it and it's asking you do you have broken lines or are your lines straight and i already know that my ink is good and it lines up and prints like it's supposed to if everything looks good on your nozzle check meaning that you don't have a bunch of broken lines and you can see the colors um then you're going to hit the circle for okay if not you'll hit the x okay um, and then at that point, guys, you can do, uh, print head cleaning, print head alignments. Those are up to you. But normally once I do that print head nozzle check and everything looks good, then I'm good to go from there. Okay. So even though it looked like I have broken lines, my colors come out fine. And so I would just hit my arrow to go back and I am ready to start, um, printing. Okay. So um, I was trying to um, walk through that process to show you my printer outside and inside. Um, I told you how to fill up your cartridges and then um, how to put them into your, your printer. Swapping out from inkjet to sublimation, as long as you have not started out with inkjet ink in that printer, you should, it should be easy breezy, beautiful. It's just a matter of filling up those cartridges and then putting them in your printer and then running that um, print head nozzle check to make sure your colors line up. If you have broken lines, then you can go in and you can do uh, a print head cleaning and print head alignments. You can run those things and then do the print head nozzle check again, okay? Now, <clears throat> mine has always been where I might have just a few little broken lines in there, guys. Um, but you can do a test print just to see what it looked like. Um, my cyan doesn't show up like real, real vibrant on here, but it shows up vibrant when I'm, when I'm printing. So this is your print head nozzle check that you're going to look for. Again, do not use your sublimation paper for this print head nozzle check. Just use a plain old piece of copy paper, okay? And... <clears throat> that's that this was the big 13 by 19 i was trying to show you okay so this is the different this is your 11 by 17 
and then you have your 13 by 19 so you can see the difference okay now some people may say why would you need a 13 by 19 well when you start getting up to the large size t-shirts like the 4x 5x 6x you want to get larger prints print areas to work you have larger print areas to work with so you need larger paper okay um i'm trying to make sure i got i covered everything um with you guys all things sublimation and try to make sure i answered a lot of the oh the other question is well once i change over change my epson over to a sublimation printer can I later go back and change it over to inkjet? Again, guys, highly not recommended, okay? I have a separate inkjet for inkjet printing. So I have two printers. I have my Epson Workforce 7720, and then I have the HP OfficeJet Pro 7740, I think it is. Um, and my HP prints up to 11 by 17. Now, had I been thinking, in the beginning, I probably would have went with two Epson uh, 7720s and had one for inkjet and one for sublimation. And that way I could have had a large print surface in 13 by 19 for sublimation or inkjet. But hindsight 2020, I didn't. I wasn't thinking like that. But you might. Okay. See, me telling you now, before you purchase your printer, you can determine if you need to get two printers, you know, same kind that print the larger size. Um, I did find, hold on. <clears throat> this is a shirt that I did with sublimation. So you guys see how vibrant those colors are and it doesn't wash, doesn't wash out. It's going to last a whole lot longer than a lot of the different, um, things that you be putting on. You're putting on your t-shirts. Um, and you can't feel it, okay? You cannot feel it. You can't even hear me rubbing that, okay? Because that ink bleeds into the, it bleeds into the fabric. So you don't have to worry about stretching it and all that because it is bled into the material. I'm gonna take this and show you the inside out. And this shirt, I love these t-shirts from Aviva Warehouse because they feel like cotton but they're polyester. <clears throat> these are, let me see if I'm be able to see this without my glasses. La Viva. La Viva is the brand of t-shirt, but it feels like and looks like cotton. So you can see on the inside, it did not bleed and does not bleed through to the backside. I didn't have to put anything in here um, in between my shirts. So there is no ink that bled onto my backside, guys, okay? So I wanna show you guys that. Um, I always highly recommend, guys, anytime you're working with any type of garment that you have, you know, DF fabric transfer, DTF, uh, vinyl, any of that, I always say wash them inside out, okay? Just wash them inside out. And always wait, especially for sublimation, you wanna wait at least 24 to 48 hours before the first wash, okay? 24 to 48 hours before the first wash. So this is a t-shirt that I've 100% polyester that I sublimated on. Again, the brand is La Viva. I purchased this at a Viva warehouse. I absolutely love, 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 love because they look and feel like cotton, but it's polyester, okay? So you can see the difference between these two brands. This one is Port and Company. Now this one looks like polyester, okay? So you can see, hopefully, the difference in those. Okay, this one looks like cotton. And this one is what it is, polyester. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Um, I think that's I think that's pretty much it for what I wanted to show you guys as far as or to tell you guys about sublimation. Periodically, I come on and I try to talk about sublimation, especially if things have changed. Um, I can include them in the updated um, video but to see sublimation in process or pro uh, just go to my cha YouTube channel click on the playlist and I have sublimation as a category under my playlist and you can see me do all types of sublimation you'll probably see some of the things that I showed you here because I videotape everything 
Um, so you'll probably see a lot of the stuff that I showed you that I've sublimated on. You'll probably see a tutorial on how I did it. OK, so I'm not going to use this time to sublimate on anything. I just want to use this time to talk about sublimation to see if it's something that you're interested in and to try to answer those questions for you before you just go out and buy a printer and then get scared because somebody said convert it over. <laughs> OK, um, it's just a matter of swapping out the ink. Do not, again, if you're going to purchase an Epson um, printer, do not put that inkjet ink into that printer. Don't say, well, I don't want to waste this ink. I mean, you're going to waste the ink or you could potentially damage your printer. So you decide which one is going to be, you know, you want to do. Okay. But I highly recommend or suggest that you do not put that inkjet ink into your printer. Just go ahead and put the sublimation ink in it and already have a backup plan to have a second printer for inkjet printing okay um most often than not when you're doing sublimation like that big uh glass cutter um glass cutting board that i showed you you don't mirror but in most cases if it's not glass that you're working with like those items you do um you do mirror okay you do mirror when you're printing and then you're going to lay the item flat down the paper face down and then it'll be going in the right direction okay all right guys i think i answered all questions in regards to sublimation if there's anything else guys that i did not answer then please chime in in the comments but i highly recommend you watch this video in its entirety to make sure that you got everything because i just gave you the nuts and bolts of everything sublimation everything and that's why this video was so long but it's gonna help you if you decide to or to help you decide if you want to go with sublimation um, because there are so many things that you can do sublimation on I don't want you to think that you're just limited to your t-shirts because you can sublimate on anything that will allow sublimation ink okay all right guys that is it you know Martin and I and the crew we got the head up out of here it's almost breakfast time and I'm hungry um, so um, that is it, guys. Again, chime in in the comments if you have any questions. Now, the only time I don't answer questions if, is if I answer that question in the video because that tells me you didn't watch the video, okay? So normally I won't ignore your questions. I will answer them. Um, and I don't want to respond and say, check the video, check the video, check the video, okay? So please watch it in its entirety because it's for you guys. I know how to do sublimation, but I want to make sure you know how to do sublimation and I want to make sure that you know what all it entails before you go out and just get a printer and then you're lost. Or you heard somebody say, now you got to convert it over. And you're like, what? They didn't tell me that. But you can buy printers that are already ready for sublimation. That you, They have echo tanks out there and everything like that. Um, but they do have printers that are ready for sublimation. But most, most of the Epson brands, brand printers or Epson, Epson printers, you can change over. Google it, <laughs> Google it, because I know that'll be the next question. Well, which Epsons? Google it. There's a whole list out there on which Epson printers can be converted over, changed over to sublimation. Um, like I said, I don't know of any HP Canons and whatever else brands out there. I've not encountered them because I love my Epson Workforce 7720, and I'm so glad I bought mine before they discontinued them. All right, guys, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I hope that this was helpful. I know it was long, but sometimes, guys, you know, to get what we want, we got to invest a little bit of time, okay? And uh, you got it for free, okay? That's it. All I ask is that you like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's it. You get this information for free. All I ask is you like, share, and subscribe. That's it, all right? All right, guys, if you're currently in my Facebook group, what's up? <laughs> if you're currently in my Facebook group, Ken Doris's Cricket and Creative Crafters, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for the love and support that you show um, in my group. And if you would like to join my group, it will be linked in the description of this video tutorial. And you can click on it and uh, agree to the Facebook group rules and we will get you in. OK, um, we're small but mighty. Okay, so I focus on quality and not quantity. Also, if you are seeing me for the first time, you like my method of teaching, 
Um, I try my best to take you from beginning to end, beginning to end and, and, and cover everything. Um, then please, please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please tell others about my YouTube channel. And always, 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 guys, even if you learn a little piece of information, please like and comment. I love reading you guys' comments, okay? So that's it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. I woke up this morning and I had sublimation on the brain and I was like, I keep saying I'm going to put a, another video out here to help you guys. And so voila, and here it is, okay? I will show you guys the next tutorial that I'm going to be doing. And don't y'all talk about me being tacky because I'm a little tacky here today. So give me a minute. <clears throat> All right, the next video tutorial that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting together a video tutorial on how I made this purse. It's made out of paper, out of car stock. And I'm going to show you guys how I put this together. Okay, so that will be my next video tutorial. I started videotaping this one to do it, to show you guys how to make it. And then I ran out of space on my phone because I talked too much and I record too much. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do it again. But this will be my next video tutorial somewhere down the road in the next week. I'm going to show you guys how to make this out of cardstock. Okay. All paper made out of cardstock. All right. All right, guys. That's my story. Sticking to it. You guys know my motto is each one reach one so that each one can teach one. And you guys have an amazing Easter weekend. Bye.